Right. Amen. I'm glad Christ is my life, aren't you? Amen. No better place to put your life than in Christ. I like that old commercial. I don't know. Maybe it's still on the radio. But it says, uh, you're in good hands with all state. You ever heard that? You're in good hands with all state. Well, I believe I'm in better hands with Jesus. Amen. If His hands are big enough and good enough to hold the world, then I believe they're big enough and good enough to hold me. Don't you? Amen. Let's look in 2 Kings chapter 6 tonight. 2 Kings chapter 6. Brother Matt Whistler, standing right back there, would you do me a favor? If you go out in that vestibule, there's a stairway that goes to that thing with Bobby up there. And uh, in that stairway is a handle with an axe head on it. I want that. Would you please? Thank you, sir. Balcony. Yes. Thing about Bobby. All right. Second Kings, chapter number 6. So glad you're here tonight. Appreciate you being in the house of the Lord. And I trust that you have come expecting to receive something from the Lord. Amen. I believe that when we expect to receive, that we can receive. Amen. Second Kings chapter number 6. We're going to start reading in verse number 1. We'll read all the way through verse number 7 tonight. Hallelujah. I was over here, thank you, Brother Whistler. I was over here praying today and just trying to get the mind of the Lord for the service. And um, I just got plumb aggravated, Brother Bonner. I sure did. I got mad at the devil. I did. And I just wish that every one of us could just get aggravated with the devil. Man. That's really what it's going to take, is that we get so mad at Him and what He's doing and what He's trying and what He's stirring up that we just turn so much to God and we say, Lord, I'm tired of all that and I want what You've got. You remember the prodigal son? I don't know where I'm going right now, but I'm just telling you what I feel, all right? Remember the prodigal son? He was in the pig pen. He thought he was loving it, but finally one day he got so sick of it that he just went up and knocked on the door of the of the pig farm owner and said, I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm going back to the Father's house. It's a whole lot better up there. And he went back. And like I told Brother Johnston this sitting at the table last night, I said when he got back to the Father's house, the Father gave him three things. He gave him a ring. He gave him a robe. And then the Bible said he killed the fatted calf. And I told him, he said, get the ribeye. He got the robe, the ring, and the ribeye. He got sick and tired of what the devil had. And went and got what God had. Now, I'm just tired of what the devil's been doing. And so it's time for us to go on and see what God's going to do. All right? Amen. Tell the devil I changed my mind. That's what you got to do. Amen. Let's look here. Second Kings chapter 6. And I'm trusting God to help us tonight. Starting in verse number 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now. The place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, under Jordan, and take thence every man a beam. And let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee, and he put out his hand and took it. I want to preach to you tonight on the secret of tragedy, the secret of tragedy. Would you pray with me tonight that the Lord would help? Heavenly Father, we ask that you would just add your blessing to the reading and the preaching of the Word tonight. I pray, Lord, that the Spirit of God would move in the hearts and lives. God, I'm asking that you would just open up the windows of heaven and give us a reviving spirit in the place tonight. 
God, let us look at our current situation and then look ahead at Christ's promise and then move forward to lay hold on eternal life. I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ tonight. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. The secret of tragedy. The secret of tragedy. We're reading here the story of the sons of the prophets. We know that they are in a place dwelling. They have a school that they're dwelling in. But verse number 1 said, The place where we dwell with you is too straight. In other words, it's too small, it's too narrow, it's too little. We need a bigger place that we can dwell in. And so they begin to move out and make progress. They begin to expand and put some growth in there. And that is what we need to see today, isn't it? It's some expansion and some growth. Amen. Where we feel like the place where we're at with God or the place where we are spiritually is just too small. And we need God to give us some growth and expansion. And so they set out from here and they said, uh, we're not going to be satisfied with this littleness anymore. But we want to go forward and we want to make some progress here. Amen. When they begin to work, there's one young man that he did not own his own axe. And so he apparently went to a neighbor or a friend and he borrowed one so he could have some input and effect on the growth. Amen. Oh, yes, I'd like to see every man and woman of God at Wyandotte Tabernacle that just got so excited about seeing God grow the church and God expand the church that they would do everything they could to see it done. Amen. If we've got to borrow, let's borrow. If we've got to beg, let's beg. If we've got to cry out, let's cry out. But Lord, we want to see some growth in the house of God. Hallelujah. But then notice also that when they begin to work, this man's axe head flies off and it lands in the river. Amen. We know that immediately that's a problem because iron doesn't swim. And so we find two things there that we need to learn. Number one, uh, that hell will have a great hindrance uh, that will st- he'll do everything he can to stop us. Uh, he will have a hindrance ready for us. Uh, amen. When you feel like revival's about to break out, uh, then hell will raise up some hindrance uh, and try to stop the move of God. Uh, just when you feel like, uh, amen, you're about to break through all the hindrances, uh, amen, then hell will throw another hindrance down. Uh, he'll He'll do anything that He can. Even make you fly off the handle, brother. Even make you fly off the handle, sister. He'll do anything He can to stop the growth. But then I want you to learn the second lesson that not only will hell have a great hindrance, but also heaven will have grace to help. Because the God will do whatever needs to be done in order to see the move of God continue. Hell will hinder, yes. But heaven will help us. And if he has to, friend, he'll perform a miracle and make iron swim. He'll do whatever has to be done in order to see the work of God go forward. Amen. The axe head. I want you to focus on that a little bit tonight. The axe head. Lord, help us. Read about a preacher one time that was using an axe in church. And he cut the brand new carpet. Lord, don't let it happen tonight. The axe head here demonstrates something to us. It shows us the sharp cutting edge that the Holy Ghost can put on a life. This handle here that I have in my hand is absolutely useless to cut down wood. This handle has no effect, it has no power, it has no ability. But when you take that steel head and you put it on that handle, all of a sudden it becomes a tool that is useful in the hand of a worker. That axe head represents or demonstrates the sharp cutting edge of a life that is filled and equipped and empowered with the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you first of all tonight that we 
we should never try to do anything without the Holy Ghost. We should never try to accomplish anything without Him. Amen. Don't try to preach without the Holy Ghost. Don't try to teach a Sunday school class without the Holy Ghost. Don't try to lead singing or play music. Amen. Don't even try to sweep the carpet without the Holy Ghost helping you. Amen. That handle is useless without the Holy Ghost. And, and, and without the axe head. Amen. And our life is useless and powerless without the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, I wish that we could realize, Brother Wilson, that what we need again is the Holy Ghost. Amen. To rest upon us. To crown us with His power. Amen. When we try to do something without God, when we try to do something without the Spirit, it creates problems for us. Amen. Remember Moses, he tried to handle it on his own hand. Remember that? He said, I'll bring Israel out of Egypt with the power of my own hand. And so he reached out and killed the Egyptian man. But he realized immediately it wasn't his hand that was going to bring deliverance. But a little while later, Brother Whistler, God used what was in his hand. The rod of God. Hallelujah. Friend, I want to tell you, when you try to do it, you'll mess it up. But when God comes by, He'll make it a powerhouse. He'll make it a miracle worker. Remember David. Saul said, use my armor. But David said, no, that's not God's way. I'll take my little old slingshot. And God anointed his slingshot and brought down the giant. It's not in our power. It's not in our ability or our possession. But it's in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember Elijah. He had nothing in himself. He had no power in his own body. But there was a day when he was on the mountaintop and he prayed 63 words and the fire of God fell from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, licked up the water off the ground and consumed the altar as well. Amen. Can I tell you when the Holy Ghost gets in it, when the Holy Ghost gets in your church, when the Holy Ghost gets in your singing and your preaching and your praying, you will see the fire of God fall upon us. Hey, man. I notice, first of all tonight, the loaning of the axe head. The loaning of the axe head. He said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. It was not his, but somebody had loaned it to him. The loaning of the axe head is the secret to our trying. Because we cannot try without the axe head. We cannot try without that. You see, friend, we're like that man in the Gospels that had a visitor come at midnight and he needed to feed him some bread. But the Bible said he had nothing in the house. And so he got up and went next door and he knocked on the neighbor's door and said, Please, amen, I know you've got plenty of bread. Please get up out of the bed and lend it to me. Amen. He had nothing, but he knew somebody that had everything. And he went and knocked on the door until he got the loan that he needed. Amen. That's where we are, friend. We are nothing in ourselves, but we need to knock on heaven's door until he lends us the power of the Holy Ghost to make us effective for him. Amen. Notice Christ's promise. That's what we see in the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said, I must go away. It is expedient for you that I go away. But if I go away, I will send another comforter. And he will dwell with you and will be in you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to give you a promise. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you on your own power. But I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. Amen. Peter stood on the day of Pentecost and he was just an empty axe handle. He had no power in himself. He had been a cursor. He had been a backbiter. He had been one to run away. He had been quick to do it in his own power. He was useless to God. But on the day of Pentecost, the heavens opened up. Amen. And the Holy Ghost fell on him. And he became a tool in the hand of the Master. And he saw 3,000 people 
people saved on that one day. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Christ has promised that we can have the power. And then we see the compassionate provision. He sent it. Hallelujah. He sent the Holy Ghost. And it rested on Peter. It rested on the rest of the disciples. And friend, it can rest on us as well. The Holy Ghost is for us. Revival is for us. The power is for you. It's for your children. It's for as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. There is a loaning of the Exodus. Do you know something? The glory of everything that we do belongs to God. Sometimes we look at the Holy Ghost as something that we use. Let me tell you, you do not use the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost uses you. You are the handle. He is the help. You are weak, but He is strong. We are nothing, but He is everything. We do not use Him. He uses us. Amen. He is the giver of the gift. He gives it to us and then uses us. Amen. Can I tell you that when so many men have messed up is when they begin to use the gift instead of the gift use them. Amen. When you begin to think that you are it. Amen. It's your power. It's your ability. Amen, friend. That's when you're going to fall. And that's when you're going to mess up. It's not ours, but it's His. But He's loaned it to us. Amen. Oh, hallelujah to God. I know some people, Brother Bronner, they think when you loan them something, they have it now. It's become theirs. Your lawnmower sits in their garage and it becomes theirs. Amen. Your chainsaw sits in their shed and it becomes theirs. Your book sits on their shelf, glory to God, long enough and they think it becomes theirs. But I came to tell you tonight, amen, we may have it for a century, but the Holy Ghost is never ours. We are still His. Amen. And as long as we keep that perspective right, He'll let us continue to borrow the power of the Holy Ghost. The loaning of the axe head. But I noticed something else. Look what happens. He said, as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. The losing of the axe head. This, friend, is the secret of our tragedy. How many people today have lost the power of the Holy Ghost? How many men and women have lost that presence of God in their life? How many churches have lost that Holy Ghost unction that rested upon them in a mighty, mighty way? Amen. That's the secret of our tragedy. You see, when a preacher loses the anointing, he does not write up a story in the newspaper and say, Pastor so-and-so has lost his anointing. Amen. When an evangelist loses a touch of God, he does not send out a newsletter and say, I've lost the touch of God. I am no longer anointed. But what they try to do is cover it up. They try to go right on as if everything's all right. When a church loses the presence of God, they don't write it in the bulletin on Sunday morning. We now have no more move of God. Amen. They just try to cover it up. They try to hide it from everybody around them. They continue to act like everything's all right. Oh, but they They've lost the axe head. What a tragedy we see here. Amen. Too many have lost the axe head. They've lost the power to do something for God. Can I ask you tonight, friend, have you lost your ability to do something for God? Have you lost the Spirit of the Lord that used to burn in your heart? Amen. Have you lost it like the prophet said? Amen. He said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. Have you lost 
lost that fire? Have you lost that urgency? Have you lost that burning desire? Amen. Jesus said the zeal of the Lord has eaten me up. Amen. Have we lost that kind of a zeal? Amen. Where it doesn't matter if we have revival or not. It doesn't matter if we have a move of God. It doesn't matter if we see souls saved. It doesn't matter if the Holy Ghost falls in the altar. Amen. We've lost the axe head. Oh, what a tragedy. Have we lost our power to see the captive set free? Have we lost our power to see miracles take place? Oh, God, help us tonight. Amen. I see the problem now. I see the problem now. I've wondered what it was. I'm swinging the axe handle, but the wood chips aren't flying. I've been swinging it away, but I'm seeing no effect anymore. I don't know what the problem is. The problem is that there's been a tragedy. You've lost the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Oh, God help us. I'm afraid that too many have lost the axe head of the Spirit's unction by letting it fall into the waters of worldliness or into the swamps of sluggishness or in the river of relaxation. Or maybe they've lost it in the pond of pleasure. It does not matter where you lost it. But I'm afraid we've got too many in the house of God that have lost the Spirit of God in their life. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. You say it will never happen to me. My response to that is it may already have happened. I see two things about this. Number one, I find diligence. Diligence. This young man is busily working. Who wants to swing a handle tonight? Hey, man. I don't know if you've ever cut wood much. My dad heated with wood in the house. Five bedrooms, two stories, full basement. We heated the house with wood. That means that it took a lot of wood. So there was a lot of axe swinging, a lot of sledgehammer swinging, and a lot of chainsaw running. Amen. Lots of wood had to be cut. And so I remember very well what it's like. You must be diligent in your work. This young man was diligent. Notice it said as he was working, as he was felling a beam. He was not sitting idly by, but he was doing the work. He was swinging the handle. He was doing all the that he knew to do. Amen. Oh, can I tell you, you can lose your power while you're busily working for God. You say, no, that's not possible. Oh, but it is. You see, you can be diligent in the work, but not take care of the axe handle and the axe head, and you can lose it. Amen. Yes, you can teach the Sunday school. Yes, you can preach the message. Yes, you can do it the vacuuming cleaning of the church. Yes, you can run the bus. You can work with the youth and still lose the power of God. We've got churches all across America today that are busy doing something, but they've lost that anointing of the Holy Ghost in their ministry. Oh, God, help us. Help us to never get so busy that we forget to look in and check up on ourselves. Help us to never get so busy that we forget it's not ours, but it's yours, oh Lord. Hey, 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 wine dot tabernacle, can I tell you tonight, it's time to do a checkup and say, have I still got the power of the Holy Ghost? Amen. Am I working and no wood chips flying? Or am I making an impact? Am I making a difference? Is there still a touch of the power in what I'm doing? for God. Not only diligence, but notice also his negligence. For while he was working, the axe head flew off of the handle. If he would have been familiar with an axe, he would have known that you've got to take time to check up on it. 
any of you have ever used an axe or a sledgehammer or anything like that, you understand what I'm about to tell you. Every once in a while while you're working, you just take your tool, take the butt of the handle, and drop it on the floor or the ground. What it does is it tightens the head up so it will not fly off the handle. If he would have remembered to do some checking up, he wouldn't have lost his power. Amen. Every once in a while while you're working for God, listen here while I'm telling you, every once in a while you need to go back to the altar and you need to just do a little checking up. Lord, tighten it up on me, Lord. Tighten the Holy Ghost up on me. Lord, don't let me slip. Don't let me lose my grip on God. And don't let God lose His grip on me. Amen. Remember, oh Lord, in Hebrews chapter 2, He said, give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we let them slip. Amen. Oh, I don't want to let it slip. I want to keep the power of God. I want to keep the anointing. I want to keep the Holy Ghost. Remember Samson? He was busy doing stuff, but he lost the power of God. If he would have stopped and checked up, he wouldn't have lost it. Amen. Remember Saul the king? He lost the anointing of God. Yes, he was busy, but he lost it all because he didn't check up on his soul every once in a while. I read the story of a Greenland ice vessel. It was out in the ice, designed for it, made for it. They were out trying to kill a whale. But as they were in the ocean, the ice got so tight around them they couldn't move anymore. So they laid to until the morning. When the morning sun began to rise, they looked out across the pieces of ice and they saw another vessel. They began to cry out to it. They began to signal to it, but there was no response. So finally, the captain of the whaling vessel, the ice vessel, he got with a few men and put into a little boat. And they picked their way through the ice flows and made their way all the way up to the side of the other boat. They began to cry out, Ship ahoy! Amen. Anybody there? They began to cry. But then they realized that though the boat was still floating, amen, that the crew was dead on the boat. Amen. They went aboard and began to examine it. They found a man that had died frozen to the ropes. They found another man, apparently the captain, that was sitting at his desk with his pen in his hand and his record book open as if he had been writing. Amen. Oh, yes, they were busy doing something, but they did not notice it got so cold and it got so dangerous that they lost out with their life. Amen. That's how it is with us, friend. We can get so busy for God. God, that we forget to go to God. We can get so busy in the work that we forget about God. Amen. Everything might look all right. You might still go to church. You might still go to the altar even and bow your head and sleep the while. Oh, but there is a problem. Amen. They've got to have a retouch of the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, God help us to not lose the power while we're in the middle of the work, while we're in the middle of the field, while we're in the middle of the labor, let's not lose the power, friend. Let's get a fresh touch of it. Let's get a hold of God again. Amen. Say, Lord, give me a new anointing. Lord, give me another touch. I don't want to lose out in the work. Brother Whistler, Brother Matt Whistler, One of the tragedies that I see is that there are people that have lost the touch of God and they don't even know it. Remember Samson? Samson thought he was all right. Even though he knew he was in the wrong place. He knew he was with the wrong people. And he knew he was playing the wrong game. But he thought he was all right. And the morning came when Samson was cried to awakeness. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And the Bible said he arose and shook himself as he had at times past. 
Christ. And he wished not that the Spirit of God had left him. Oh, what a tragedy it is that some people are still going through the motion. They're still swinging the handle. They wonder why they don't have an effect. They wonder why the work's not getting done. But the whole time they're swinging an empty handle, they've lost the power of God. Oh, I'm reminded of Sardis in Revelation chapter 3. He said, you have a name that you live. But you are dead. Amen. Oh, I wish the Holy Ghost would prick our hearts tonight to examine ourselves and make sure we've got the power of God on us. Look here, third thing I want to show you. It gets a little better now because notice what happens. And the man of God in verse 6 said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, take it up to thee, and he put out his hand and took it. We see that it's been loaned, but now it's been lost. But notice now there is a locating of the axe head. Notice the first thing he did. He expressed his need. He said, oh, master. Who did he cry to? The master. He didn't cry out to the men around him. He didn't know they could help him. He said, oh, master, I've got to have help. I've lost my ability. I'm going through the motion, but I lost my ability, Lord. I have no power anymore. I'm having no effect anymore. He said, master, help me. Church, I want to tell you, if you've lost the power of God, and you don't have the ability anymore, and you're not seeing an effect anymore, what you need to do is call out to the Master and say, Master, I've lost it. It was borrowed. It was loaned to me. But I've lost it, Lord. Amen. Can you express it tonight? Can you lay aside any pride and say, Lord, I've lost that fervency of the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I've lost that Spirit of God that used to flow over me. I've lost it, God. It's been a while since I prayed in the Spirit. It's been a while since I've been lost in the Holy Ghost. It's been a while since I felt the victory. Can you express it tonight and say, Lord, I'm in need. Lord, I'm in need. Oh, God, I need a new anointing. Oh, God, I need a new touch. He expressed His need. But now notice what happens. The prophet goes, gets a stick, and throws it in the water. The first thing we've got to have is a touch of Calvary. Hallelujah. That old tree. Hey Amen. That's where we got to go back to. If you want to be able to fell trees, you've got to find the tree. You've got to go back to Calvary and say, Lord, I've lost my touch and I'm here to make it right. And then we're going to the upper room and we're going to see a miracle again. The iron's going to swim. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. You can express it and then you can experience it. Get up and go back. Notice what he said, Brother Bronner. Where's it at? He said, I lost it right here. Friend, you know right where you lost it. You know right where you were when you quit feeling the power. Was it when you quit praying? Was it when you quit fasting? Was it when you quit being faithful to the house of God? Oh, you know where it was. And the thing to do is go right back there and say, Lord, I lost it right here. And I'm going to pick it up right here. Amen. Wherever it was that you quit feeling the power of the Holy Ghost, go back to that place and pick it up again and experience it again. Notice what he said. He said, put forth your hand and take it. And he put his hand out and got a hold of it. Can I tell you tonight? Amen. The power of God is available. The Spirit of the Lord is available. All you've got to do is reach out and take it. All you got to do is reach out and get a hold of the Holy Ghost and you can start being effective again. You can start working miracles again. You can have the power of God again. Lord, help us locate the Spirit of God one more time. 
I'm going to close right here. There it is. That's the ability to fell trees. It's right there. Where at? At the altar. If you want to locate it tonight, all you've got to do is get up. And by getting up, you're expressing your need. And by coming to the altar, you're laying hold on it again. You're experiencing it one more time. Lord, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that you would speak to our hearts, that you would prick our spirits with that old-time Holy Ghost power. Lord, if there's one among us that has lost the touch of the Holy Ghost, they're not as close to you as they used to be. They're not experiencing the power like they used to. Lord, right here in the middle of a time of revival, right here in the middle of a time when we can see growth take place in the house of God, Lord, some have lost the Spirit. Hell has tried to hinder. But Lord, I pray tonight that You would let the axe head swim again. That You would let it float by us again. That we can reach forth our hand and lay hold on it. Lord, maybe there's a preacher or a teacher or a worker for God that's lost that unction, that fire, that desire. Lord, I pray that You would put it back on them. Lord, maybe there's a Christian here tonight that has lost that closeness, that fervency of the Spirit. Oh, God, that makes revival possible, that makes the church service easy, Lord. God, I pray tonight that You would stir us, that we would go back where we lost it, and we would experience it once again in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask it. I'm pleading, Lord. I'm pleading, Lord. Oh, God, would you help somebody that needs a fresh touch in the name of Jesus. Would you stand with me, church, all across the building as reverently as you can. Heavenly Father, we're asking you to move right now in this altar service. The axe is here with all of its power and its ability. I wonder if there's somebody that's willing to step out and come to the altar. Maybe even in figure, you want to grab that axe and just hold it up to God and say, Lord, give me a fresh touch of your spirit, a fresh touch of your power. Give me a new anointing. Give me a revival. Give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But tonight, you see your need. Why don't you come to the altar? Why don't you come to the altar? Hey, man, Lord, I need a new anointing. Lord, I need a new anointing. I need a new reviving. A refilling of the Holy Ghost. I need a fresh baptism of the Spirit of God. Oh, Lord, it's been a while since I've been lost in the Holy Ghost. It's been a while since I've been caught up into the glory of the Lord. But tonight, God, I want a fresh touch. I'm tired of losing my effectiveness.